Good morning on uh, Monday of uh, the eighth week in ordinary time. Also, in our country, we celebrate, um, I don't know if celebrate's a, the best word, probably remember, uh, Memorial, Memorial Day. Um, again, a day where we, um, we remember and honor and appreciate and uh, being thankful uh, for all of our servicemen and women who lost their lives uh, in battle, protecting our freedoms. Um, <laughs> you know, today a lot of people are on vacation barbecuing, but maybe not so much today because of the weather. Uh, but, you know, we do all these uh, leisure, relaxing, fun things. It's all possible because our brave men and women out there um, who, who make it possible uh, for, for us throughout the, throughout the decades and, and centuries. So uh, special prayers for them today uh, and for their loved ones if any of our families living today are grieving and missing um, their sons and daughters or moms and dads. Um, but anyways, though, we'll, we'll start our first letter of St. Peter. That's the first reading that we're going to be cycling through either this week, maybe next week too. I'm not exactly sure. So first of all, we're going to assume that the author of this letter is St. Peter. Okay, so that, that's the first thing. Sometimes you read commentaries and they talk about, you know, a disciple later on writing a letter, all that stuff. But that's all... A lot of that's all contemporary scholarship, you know. By contemporary, I mean 18, 1900s. Um, we're going to stick with our early church fathers who always attributed this letter to St. Peter one way or another, whether it was Peter himself writing it or whether he had a scribe writing it for him. Either way, this is St. This is Peter speaking to us here, uh, the word of God through St. Peter. So he's writing to, uh, to five communities in Asia Minor, and a big part of his theme is enduring trials, and then in the enduring of the trial, though, still celebrating the joy and hope that awaits us with the promises of God. Okay, so there's more to be said, and we'll get to that as we proceed through the letter. But let's just quickly go through the letter here. So he begins with, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gives us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Okay, so the first, the first thing he wants to tell us is the fact that we are born again, that the tomb becomes our new womb. Okay, so as we experience death, it's not death in a final, you know, permanent finality type of thing, but but our graves become our new wombs through which we await what? We await our new birth into our own resurrected bodies, okay? So he wants it, that, that's our end, that's our destination, okay? And then he continues, um, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfaded, unfaded, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith. Okay, so this new life, so the life we live now, okay, is a, is a decaying, fading life, right? We, we're growing older, our bodies are hurting, okay? We're weighed down by all of our mental, emotional traumas, all, all that stuff, uh, the struggle with sin, all that is a life that is fading, okay? This is the life we're called to let go, to have joy and hope. Why? Because what the sufferings we're experiencing now is is only temporary. We we are waiting. Uh, we we began our new birth, but it will be completed through our own resurrection of the dead. So in this you rejoice, although now for a while you may have to suffer through various trials. Okay, so again, preaching to a community, probably he himself is suffering, but also to a community of Christians who are also suffering through their faith. Okay, but it's, it's the faith, as he's going to say in the next line, the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, that is perishable even through tested through fire. Okay, our faith is our greatest treasure. Okay, our complete trust into the word and promises that God has given to us, that this life of struggle that we're leading now is only going to lead to something much greater. Okay. 
although you have not seen him, you love him. Okay, so think of uh, the Gospel of John. Okay, blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Okay, so these are people who haven't seen the incarnate word, but are living, their faith is developed by the teaching of the apostles, by Peter himself. Even though you have not seen him yet, you believe. You rejoice with an inscribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So again, all this is the suffering is going to lead to our, to our salvation. Okay, and we're going to repeat this. So remember, the, the opening letter of, of, of Peter, like many of St. Paul's letters, um, kind of develops the framework that he's going to talk about throughout the rest of the letter. So we'll have more reflection, more elaboration on this as we proceed through this letter. But I'll conclude with this one thing. It's kind of funny, isn't it, that the one who's talking about the suffering Christ and sufferings is St. Peter. <laughs> okay, if you read the Gospels, who's the one that objected to Jesus when he announced his own passion and death? Right, it was St. Peter who, who stepped in front of him and said, far be it, Lord, I should ever let that happen to you. You know, he, Peter's also the one in the agony of the garden where Jesus is arrested at the Mount of Olives. It's Peter who cuts off the sword of, of Malchus, the, the, the ear, uh, cut, cuts off with the sword, the ear of Malchus. <laughs> so it's kind of funny how Peter struggled with the concept of the suffering Christ himself and how our sufferings are related to that. He struggled with that. Uh, and yet, it's funny how sometimes those who doubt the most when they come around to believe, they become the greatest teachers and greatest inspiration of that. And surely St. Peter is definitely one of those. Um, the one who struggled with the concept of suffering uh, is now going to teach us about suffering and suffering with Christ and how it leads to our salvation and to our future glory. But more on that as we proceed through this great letter. May God bless you.